Hi guys, it's April and I garden down in Southeast Nebraska zone of 5B. It is another windy day. It is still spring. It's going to be windy. It is Nebraska, but I'm hoping with my new microphone that this garden tour goes a little better than the first two. I love where I live, but sometimes, sometimes the wind is a bit much. So this is going to be the last garden tour for the month of May. And we've got some things growing and uh, I'm just gonna show them to you. That's all my lead up for today. You're welcome. I don't know why I keep starting with the in-ground section of the garden, but that's just where we're at. We have all of the tomatoes doing fairly well. And then we have the strawberries and chives underneath this peach tree. We are starting to get some blossoms on the tomatoes. Now this tomato plant I don't think is doing the best and I'm wondering if it's because the sprinkler head is right there. See the little, little thing right there? That's a sprinkler. So this guy just might be getting too much water and isn't enjoying it. Luckily, I have this same variety in one of the beds, which I will show you later. Now we've got the honeyberry bushes that are huge, along with my onions and my pepper and my tomato plant that's in a pot. And this guy, is still probably doing the best out of all of my tomato plants. There is some concerning things going on with these leaves. I'm not entirely sure what's going on, but I'm hoping it grows out of it. Before I talk about that stuff over there, we can look at all of these tomato plants. Which are doing pretty well. They've pretty much doubled in size since I've put them in the ground. Now, we can go back to this section right here. I'm staring directly at the sun right now, so I'll make it brief. But these pots right here these are all of my winter squash plus one test zucchini for this cover crop section. I have a video up of me planting out these varieties if you want to check that out. And of course, I have the video explaining the cover crop. This cover crop has probably got about two and a half weeks left. Maybe just two weeks left before I cut it all back. And I've got some woven fabric that I'll put over top of that. And then once that dies back, and if any of my squashes in these pots come up, they will go in that section. Suppose I could start that bed. So we've got some more nasturtium starting to pop up. And a couple more in that side from last week. But otherwise, the Roma style tomatoes are doing good. Some of my radishes are starting to bolt. Not too thrilled about that. I haven't decided if I'm going to pull them yet or if I'm just gonna let them flower and then pickle the radish pods off the top because I do like pickled radish pods. Pepper's doing good. We have a lot of these runner beans are just getting eaten by something. I don't know what. I think they'll survive, so I'm just kind of letting them go. But we'll see. Eggplant is being an eggplant. Some of my peas are not going up. There we go. <laughs> And then we've got all four of the zucchini seeds that I planted came up. I 
don't know if I'm gonna leave them or if I'm going to thin them out. I haven't quite decided yet. This Brentino ah, still doesn't look the best, but it's still growing, so I'm just letting it go. The Nebraska wedding always does really, really well, so I'm excited for those. Got the spicy peppers and the garlic. I've also got this calendula that's doing really good. Carrots are getting taller. Still have that awkwardly empty spot. There are a few that seem to be coming up here and there in that patch, but wondering if most of the seeds got washed this direction. We've got the onions. These are the Walla Wallas and they are by far my best looking onions. But the tomato plants are looking good as well. And last week I showed you that the beans are starting to come up and these are probably the best looking bush beans I've had in quite a while. Now all of these are from Save Seeds. They're a mixture of the Tongue of Fire and the Dragon Tongue bush beans. I got them mixed up, so they're just called Tongue. <laughs> but I also have some nasturtium coming up here as well. Before I move to the next bed, let's check out the pond, which has turned a really weird color. I have never seen it this amber color before. So I might have to do something with that. And it looks like the fountain's not doing anything, which isn't good. But we do have our first lily leaf poking up. We'll see how things go from there. The other one I thought was dead, but it looks like we've got some leaves starting to come up. The rest of the stuff you see is the mosquito, what is it called? It kills mosquitoes, so that's why that's in there. I do think I saw some zinnias starting to pop up here and there. And these guys back here are doing okay, but as always, something is trashing my kiwi plant every year, but it seems to do okay. And it looks like we're starting to get some sunflowers coming up. I don't know how much is actually starting to come up in this whole row, but we've got little babies here and there. In the next bed, we've got more onions. This is the candy onions. We don't they're doing okay, but they're not as sturdy as the Walla Walla. And this flambo beans, they didn't all come up, which is a little concerning. Potatoes are looking amazing. I need to deadhead that white dandelion. Some of these Walla Wallas that I planted look like they're coming back. Some of them look like they're struggling a little bit. The tomato plants I've doubled in size, and of course, we've got my red onions in the back there. Give you a better look at the bed. More Roma. 
And this time it's this Korean long. But it just. Ugh. Letting it go, but I don't have high hopes. Here we have the sweet peppers, that banana pepper in back. Always does the best for me. It is the Goddess Variety by Johnny's, and it's always the first one to produce, and it always produces the most, and it's always the biggest. Still no okra coming up, so I might have to plant another round of okra seeds. I don't know why I'm struggling with okra. I struggled last year too. I had to do a couple rounds of okra before it started coming up. But this sunflower, this is a volunteer sunflower. He's huge. I'm excited to see what type he is. Of course the garlic. Oh, I was gonna show you guys this. I need to come back and I need to harvest these garlic scapes today. And I think there are a ton in there. So I'm gonna have a lot of garlic pesto. I'm excited. I think that would be really good if I mixed it into a focaccia. So I might try that. Carefully pan around. This is basically just becoming a milkweed bed. I think there are some other plants here and there starting to come up besides the dandelions. I thought I saw some of the buckwheat. But now I can't find the seedling. Well, there it is. You see that? You see that other little baby right there? It's either soba or buckwheat. I'm gonna walk back over here because I don't think I've shown you these pots. And also, I got a new weather station so I can see what's going on. Got some more onions and some of my variegated peppers. Let's see if I can go around. And of course, this dwarf tomato plate as well, which is looking good. There we go. This is a better angle. You can see all the pepper plants. And then you can see that tomato plant. Finally, we are going to look at the side garden make the robin unhappy with us. Got the butterfly pea, still the only one in that pot, but it's better than nothing. The tomato and the garlic. The peas in this bed right here aren't doing so well, and I think it might be because they get too much sun. I've on and off had success with peas in this area, so I'm not really that surprised that they're struggling. It's just, these trellises just fit perfectly over here and these trellises are perfect for peas. But maybe I'm just gonna have to give up on the idea of peas in this area. But behind here, you can see all of those runner beans starting to come up. And the onions that I planted are looking good. I also have some garbanzo beans starting to come up. Not all of them, but a good chunk of them. And then of course here we've got the other tomatoes, which these guys are doing the curl too. I'm wondering if it's got anything to do with how I'm watering. But the peas are attaching themselves. The calendula 
is calendulating, but also being eaten by something, which I'm okay with as long as they eat that and not those. And the lettuce I planted back there is, I don't know, not doing the greatest. We do have this greens bed, which some of the celery looks like it's doing okay and some of it not so much. So get me out of there. So you can see that little one in the back. He's like, nope, don't like life. But the rest of these, pretty okay. The spinach is phenomenal. But this Braz Atomic Grape. I don't don't know where that curl is coming from and some of them some of the plants have it worse than others but they all have it a little bit here's the thyme and the agasashi just looking good and then the tomato plants that I have left and have no idea what to do with here is this peach tree with the strawberries and the chives. It looks like, right there, I have a strawberry I need to pick. I don't know if I can do this with a camera, but I can try. <laughs> Problem is, not getting hit by the tree. It's a funky looking strawberry. Now the real question is, can I get down? Got this eggplant. It's getting eaten by something. It doesn't look like it's doing quite as well as the one in the bed. And then have that tomato plant that is curling. Doesn't have the same soil. Doesn't have the same anything, but the same watering, which is why I'm wondering if it's my watering. And then the blueberry plants. Which look funny in the Nebraska wind. But that is the last May garden tour. Now I'm hoping the audio for all of that was okay. I'm not gonna know until I go and I edit. So, fingers crossed. I have my strawberry that I'm gonna go eat. And then I'm going to water the garden because I think there are a few things that need it. As always, if you would like to follow me in my gardening journey and continue to see this garden growing, if you're not, subscribe down below, hit the bell, do all the things to get all of the notifications. I also have an Instagram account where I do some photo updates when I'm in between garden tours. I will probably do a video of, or maybe a short of when we hit the test plot and we cut that down and we put the fabric over top. Otherwise, there's not a lot more planting that is going to be happening in this garden for the next several months. We are in full on garden season. Everything is in its place. Everything has a place or is slated to have a place and all the seeds are in. So I hope to see you guys in another video and I heart your beautiful faces.